Hi, good to see you. Here we are for Skate Tales in Mukono, Uganda. The Pearl of Africa. And in this episode, we're gonna see Jose Geral and the Uganda Skateboard Society. Those guys are starting a scene from scratch. This is it. Seen this place so many times online. Crazy looking skate park. Wow. It looks even better in real life. Hey. Yo, what's up? Man? How are you doing? I'm better. I'm good to be right. Gerald Gosset discovered skateboarding purely by chance back in 2005. As a matter of fact, he'd never seen one up until then, not even on TV. A Canadian NGO worker cruised down the street past him on a skateboard and Gerald was dumbstruck. Shortly after, the Canadian guy headed back home and left his board for Gerald. Six years later, Gerald founded the Uganda Skateboard Society, who decided to build their own skate park with the help of foreign donors. With plans ripped from the internet, they set off to build themselves their dream skate park, complete with its own mini mega. The park has flourished since, and the Ugandan skate scene has grown exponentially. For many of them, the skate park and the Uganda Skate Society is home. Not many foreign skaters have ever visited Uganda, but that doesn't mean that the skaters of Uganda are not making waves around the world. I met up with Tyler Surrey in the capital Kampala to discover the story of a skateboarding grassroots movement fueled and propelled by locals and locals alone in one of the world's most deprived regions. Uh, yeah, I'm calling Sobuga Gerard, but I'm known as Gose Gerard in the skateboarding community. I first saw skateboarding in 2005 from a Canadian guy who was called Brian. Brian Lai. He had come from Canada to Uganda to do some voluntary work. So this guy came with his skateboard, and that's how I got to know about skate, skateboarding. <laughs> we were living in ghettos, but through skateboarding, it really changed my life. And I think it did change only my life, but my entire family. In 2010, skateboarding was just within our hood. So to me, I was like, uh, we have to make skateboarding grow in Uganda. So we teamed up and uh, had to shift all the way from Kampala to Mukono. Uh, Mukono is a district in Uganda and uh, we are like 25 kilometers away from the capital in Kampala. And it's always crazy like this with yeah. motorcycles. Mukono is a word in, in, in our mother tongue called hand. Hand is Mukono. The hand of God. I don't know the hand. Maybe we're gonna change it to the hand of skateboarding. Hand. The, hand is, the hand of skateboarding is here in Mukono in Uganda. Right. Uh, my mom is a pastor, and this school had offered him a class where I used to do his preaching, his church. In his, on this property? On this property. Uh, the skate park was being constructed in a school premises. The school donated that piece of land to, for skateboarding. It's a community, community school. We bring in different kids to do their sport. As you see, he has football, he has skating. I mean, this is a very big opportunity for them. So, for the world to see on different platforms. I mean, because we've seen people skate, um, skaters, skaters from uh, the US, France, Spain, you know, they're doing it. 
So that's that, that's what brought us to open up to give in this place for the project. Zaya, Zaya, how long have you been skating? So I've been skating for three years. Three years? So we had a friend from France. He was into the street art stuff. And they'd be like, okay, we're painting this stuff. They collected the funds and they sent these funds to us. How about when we go on YouTube, we get some short skate park construction course. We had to go a DI, do it yourself way the whole design is from the locals it's pretty amazing man i was tripping when gerald told me that he had no previous experience and they had no one help them with it when we went there it's it's actually i mean it's gnarly for sure they, they built some gnarly tranny and gnarly banks but uh as far as the materials go and the finish it's it's like really good Looks like people are lacking skate shoes out here. Skate shoes, there's no skate shop. So we got a bunch of stuff from Europe. And yeah, gonna hook the homies up. I grew up watching Danny Way, Bob Banquist, Tony Wu. These guys were getting the mega ramps. So we loved mega ramps a lot. As of now, you can see all those kids, but not even a mini, a mini mega. But the locals call it a mega ramp. It's our mega ramp. Big shout out to the airline company employees that let us carry all this stuff on board. There's 120 kilos of skateboard gear in total. We're on our way to Gerald's house because you can't just go to the skate park and be like, there you go, that's all for you. That would be chaos. So we're just gonna give it to Gerald and he would gradually disperse the goods to the people that need it the most. Hey, Gerald, we brought some stuff. Can you give me a hand, please? Uganda Skateboard Society headquarters, Gerald's house. It's my home. I stay here with my kid and uh, my girlfriend as well. But it still acts as a Uganda Skateboard Society office because all the stuff, uh, the skate gears are being kept from here. 
This is, this is my award I won in Uganda, in the Community Builder Award in the sports category. The donations which I really receive, they don't come from companies. They don't come from pro skateboarders. You're one of the a few people who do donate. Like for example, Chad Muska, he donates, like he's always down. On any campaign we come up with, dude is always down to support. Everybody was down to donate, give product, because they know how hard it is in Africa, you know? So thanks to all the sponsors. Yeah, thank you everybody for supporting these guys. And Gerald is truly worthy of his award for the local community builder. My main goal is, 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 is uh, growing skateboarding. That's, that's what I stand for. Growing skateboarding in, in, in Uganda, in Africa as well. It's locally made, handmade. So if you want to donate to Uganda Skateboard Society, you can get a t-shirt with the donation. And it's going to cover administration costs, skate park, skate park repair, new shoes for the kids. So thank you for this one. I'm going to be repping. So guys, do you want to grab a Rolex? A Rolex? A Rolex, yeah. It's kind of expensive, but let's check it out. Check them out. It's, there's a point right here, Rolex point. Let's go find out. And... This is Rolex? Yeah. Let me see what you got. So Rolex is not no watch here. Rolex is actually a rolled pancake with egg, chapati. Yeah, chapati, chapati with egg. Yeah, yeah add some cabbage to it. Cabbage. Thank you so much. Ah, smell of happiness. <laughs> mm. Thank you. Chapati brothers. Whoa, bro. This is Moses. Gerald's brother. And the thing they need most is pads. There's, yeah, there's no, there's no basis for what they're doing. It's like grassroots skateboarding, even though it exists in other parts of the world here. It's, there's no skateboarding culture, no precedent to base anything off of. They're learning pretty much from scratch. Like This is like ground zero for skateboarding out here. We told them that skateboarding is all about being creative. So every time they come up with their own style, these kids in Uganda, they're coming up with their own skateboarding. No, there's no Western influence here. I mean, they're just doing as much as they can with it. It's, it's crazy how much they've learned, like with no, with no previous knowledge or anything. What they're doing at that skate park, just the way they learn is, is very unorthodox and it's really sick to see. Someone comes up with a trick, and for them, when they do these tricks, they be like, oh, that's my trick. So I have to go on YouTube, show them someone doing it, and be like, oh, he, has, he did this long time ago, so you're inventing what was being invented before. They don't know the names of the tricks. They probably don't even know the names of what they're doing. What's the name of that trick? He doesn't know. I mean, I think they just go up and they base it off feeling. Whatever feels natural to them, they, they make it happen. That's how you come up with these crazy early grab airs. Like, even one guy was trying a 540. That was insane, man. Like, where are they getting this from? These kids who do come from poor families, these kids who do live on streets, they only have skateboarding. They don't even have homes where they stay. 
they take care of themselves. Most of them come skate and then go back home hungry. Yeah, those are some of the challenges they face. When they come at the skate park, they forget all that. They don't feel like they are abandoned because we are always one. It's like we're a family here. So if a child or a fella skater gets a problem, we are all concerned to help that fella. Yes. Many of them are coming here without uh, even having what to eat. Yesterday he said, no accommodation, no way to sleep. But then again, when they come here, they are looking for hope in the skating fraternity. They are looking for, actually, Gerald has done a very big work. He has been hosting some of them at his home. Gerald is doing wonders out here. I mean, without that, these kids don't have much to do every day and they don't have much prospects. So obviously giving them a place like that just gives them a safe place, so like a sense of community, a, a nice little safe zone, and something to aspire towards and something to, to have, because obviously if not, they might turn to the streets. Pretty much all the, the positive aspects of skateboarding, he's, Gerald's promoting that through his Uganda Skateboard Society. This guy is ripping, and he's ripping on this crack, and if you can tell the shape of the tail, it's been skated. This is uh, your new board. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for skateboarding. So how long have you been uh, a farmer? I've been doing this for like three years. Three, three years. years yeah. So how old are you? Um, I'm 18. And uh, that's a family car. I like to know mine from my father. Okay. Hey, that's it. And this is your property, your family property? It's a family property. Cool, cool, cool. And is that the homie? Uh, that's my bro. Oh, that's your brother? The one I work with. So how much time do you spend on this? Every this day. I have to come and I look after my chicken. Every day? Every day, every morning. <laughs> For us, we sell, we sell our chickens. We show the eggs we get from the chickens. After our chickens are fed, then we sell them all and we bring another, another one. And does the chickens inspire you to do some tricks? Yes, they're also. <laughs> they inspire me to do big airs as they can fly, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I also want to become like them when I fly. I go to mega, then I jump. Hey, that's it. Well, thank you for showing us your farm. It's been awesome to see some animals. And it's a great honor you to be here. Today we're gonna build some portable obstacles with the locals. Looking for a welder. And yeah, so the guys can go around the country, skate wherever they want. Let's see if they got some metal. Yeah, so we figured we'd try to like round out their knowledge a little bit and so we were like, oh, let's build a box, let's build a flat bar. I mean, some of them didn't even know what we were talking about when we were like, yeah, we're going to build a box, like have a flat bar. And this is how you start learning these tricks, like with the ollie on flat and they have their park knowledge. Now we got to bring in the street knowledge for them. So. All right, we just got the meadows. Now let's go to the skate park and look for a welder. See you later. Don't forget my board. Got the materials for the flat bar. Found a welder where obviously he had no idea what we were trying to do, but we showed him our little diagrams and he actually made the flat bar like perfect. He made a pole jam. I mean, for not knowing anything about skating and they're like welding gates and doors, this guy made a pole jam for us. That was pretty epic. We just got in a cab and we're looking for some more passengers, more wood for our obstacles. We already went to three different shops and couldn't find any wood, so here we go. Hopped in a cab, gotta go a little bit further. It's been already a couple hours trying to find materials, you know. So we finally found some two by fours. Had to go to like five shops to get this wood. Our friend right here was nice enough and he's helping us with the box. And it's all done by hand, so it takes a little while longer. But it's better, you know, with love, made with love. This is a Boda Boda, which is a local type of taxi. And somehow they're bringing everything on a motorcycle on this narrow road. Mm. 
Here we go. Come on. Success. Yeah, we built the box. It was all just blank wood and obviously with all the colors and everything here, we we figured like, oh, we had the crayons for the kids. It's gonna look cooler now. It's not gonna look like I'm straight from the hospital. So it just kind of happened naturally. Like, obviously, give them the crayons, have them decorate the box. Like, let's give this thing some color, you know? Let's have it fit in better. So sick. The box looks just like my cast. We see all the kids that were trying to meet us there come walking down the hill, and so we just had them hop in as many as could fit. found a road with good fat ground. It's not perfect, but it's rollable. This is the fucking most root session I've ever witnessed. All the people living on the street, all the families came out and little kids and you could tell they'd, they'd never seen anything like that. Everyone was having a good time, even the kids and the parents, like it was, it was a session they'll never forget. It's probably something that will never happen on their street again, so that was pretty special. First of all, it's not a, a, a very old game in Uganda, so not all people like it. Our kids might break, you know, that's the first thing that comes to their mind. Our family members, most of them do not like skating. They're like, ah, you're going to break your bone. We fear what we don't know. Naturally, a human being fears what they don't understand, right? So now when it comes in, uh, people are skeptical about this. For me, it's, I just love it because I used to see it on TV, you know? Now when I see it here, when I'm the one skating, I feel good, you know? I don't know, actually, how I can say it, but I feel so happy. Because skateboarding is my life, actually. No skateboarding, no me, <laughs> you know. Skateboarding, it's fun. Uh, to us girls, I think it's a little bit hard, but I will manage. <laughs> yes. After skateboarding, I've got, I've got new things from skateboarding. Yeah. Skateboarding, is, I like it for mad. From the ocean of mad. I feel a lot of joy. Yeah. I feel like the whole country is in my hands. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I like it to continue in the future and uh, bring more kids, especially the girls, you know. Most of people ask, come and ask our mom, why did you allow those girls to join skateboarding? But she, she only says that it's fun that I enjoy because it's, it's my hobby. Okay, for me, I think yeah, it's for both, yeah? male and female. Yeah? But people yeah, think that it's for that game, it's, it's for boys, what? Yeah? yeah. But when I joined, I learned that skateboarding is for all genders. Yeah. I'm very proud actually. I feel so happy because this is my dream. I, I want to be like him because he's a pro. 
and I want to be a pro skateboarder. Yeah, I really have a dream in skateboarding. I really hope I, got, I get some opportunities. I want to be an ambassador. They have a lot of dreams. And for them, they know that skateboarding will take them somewhere. So, we did bring a bunch of skateboard gear, but the priorities here are different. Thank you so much. Yeah, dog. It Waji airs from Uganda. So what does skateboarding mean to you? Having fun, new, meeting new people, making friends, and teaming up with the entire international skateboarding community. I have more than 10,000 10, friends through skateboarding. 